You see a manufactured spaceship or airplane as something natural, in spite of the fact that all its components are made of broken or re-melted parts of the original supreme system. Imagine a being who breaks off a piece of an airplane while it's in flight and uses its parts to make himself a hammer or a scraper and then praises himself for having succeeded in making a primitive tool. He does not understand that one cannot keep breaking off pieces of a flying airplane indefinitely. How can you not grasp that our earth must not be tortured like that? The computer is considered to be an achievement of the human mind, but few realize that the computer may simply be compared to a prosthesis of the brain. You can imagine what would happen to a person with normal healthy legs if they walked on crutches all the time. Naturally, their leg muscles would atrophy. No machine will ever be superior to the human brain, provided the brain is kept in constant training. Wow. Anastasia rubbed at a tear rolling down her cheek and stubbornly persisted in elucidating the incredible revelations stemming from her extraordinary logic. At that time, I had no idea how everything she said would arouse millions of people, set the minds of scholars astir, and even as mere hypotheses proved to be without parallel anywhere in the world. According to Anastasia, the sun is something like a mirror. It reflects emanations from the earth, which are invisible to the eye. These emanations come from people in a state of love, joy, or some other radiant feeling. Reflecting off the sun, they return to the earth in the form of sunlight and give life to everything on the planet. She brought up a whole array of supporting arguments, which were not that simple to grasp. If the sun and other planets were simply consumers of the sun's grace of light, she said, it would be extinguished or burn unevenly, and its glow would be off kilter. In the universe, there is and can be no lopsided process. Everything is interrelated. She cited, too, the words of the Bible, quote, and the life was the light of men, unquote. Anastasia also stated that one man's feelings can be transmitted to another by reflecting off the celestial bodies, and she demonstrated this by the following example. Nobody on earth can deny that you can feel when somebody loves you. This feeling is especially noticeable when you are are with a person who loves you. You call it intuition. In fact, invisible light waves emanate from the one who loves, but the love can be felt if it is strong enough even when the individual is absent. By drawing upon this feeling and understanding its nature, one can do wonders. This is what you call miracles, mysticism, or incredible abilities. Tell me, Vladimir, do you not feel a bit better with me now? Somehow lighter, warmer, more fulfilled? Yes, I replied. For some reason, I have started to feel warmer. Now watch what happens when I concentrate on you even more strongly. Anastasia lowered her eyelids ever so slightly, slowly stepped back a few paces and stopped. A pleasant feeling of warmth started running through my entire body. It gradually intensified, but didn't burst into flame and didn't make me hot. Anastasia turned and slowly, be and slowly and began to slowly walk away, hiding behind the thick trunk of a tall tree. The sensation of pleasant warmth did not lessen, and to it was added another, as though something were helping my heart pumped blood through my veins, and with every heartbeat came the impression that my bloodstream were instantly reaching to every little vein in my body. The soles of my feet broke out in a heavy sweat and became very moist. 
Quote, you see, now is it all clear to you? Anastasia said as she triumphantly reappeared from behind the tree, confident that she had proved something to me. You see, you felt all that you felt all that when I went behind the tree trunk, and your sensations even increased when you could not see me. Tell me about them. I told her and then asked in turn, what does the tree trunk show? Quote, what do you think? The waves of information and light went directly from me to you. When I hid myself, the tree trunk was supposed to significantly distort them, since it has its own information and its own glow, but this did not happen. The waves of feelings began falling directly upon you, reflecting off the celestial bodies, and even intensified. Then I caused what you call a miracle. Your feet began to perspire. You failed to mention that fact. Quote, I didn't think it was important. How do my feet perspiring constitute a miracle? Quote, I chased all sorts of diseases out of your body through your feet. You should be feeling a lot better now. It is even noticeable on the outside. You are not slouching as much. Indeed, I was feeling better physically. Quote, so when you concentrate like that, you dream up something and whatever you want comes to pass? Quote, that describes it more or less. Quote, and does what you dream about always come to pass, even when you're asking for something besides bodily healing? Quote, always, as long as it is not an abstract dream. As long as it is detailed down to the minutest aspects and does not contradict the laws of spiritual being. I do not always manage, however, to come up with a dream like that. Thought has to proceed extremely quickly, and there must be a corresponding vibration of feelings, and then it will definitely come true. It is a very natural process. It happens in the lives of many people. Ask among your acquaintances. Perhaps you will find someone, some among them who have dreamt this way and their dream has come true, either partially or fully. Quote, detailed thinking proceeding extremely quickly. Tell me, when you were dreaming about the poets and artists in the book, was that all in detail too? Did your thought proceed quickly then? Extraordinarily quickly. Everything was so specific down to the finest detail. Quote, so now you think it's going to come true? Quote, yes, it will. Quote, there wasn't anything else you dreamt about at the time? You've told me everything about your dreams? Quote, not everything. Then tell me everything. Do you, do you really want to listen to me, Vladimir? Really? Yes. Anastasia's face brightened as though illuminated by a flash of light. It was with inspiration and excitement that she continued her incredible monologue. 